Awesome. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jason Devorkin. I'm a principal industry specialist with AWS, working with a bunch of media and entertainment and sports customers. Very excited to bring you today one of our awesome sports customers in the PGA Tour. Scott Gutterman. Scott, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hey, Jason. Thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you guys all for coming to see us. Uh, I'm Scott Gutterman. I'm the Senior Vice President of Digital Operations at the PGA Tour. Uh, I oversee all of the Tour's digital platforms as well as all the Tour's broadcast technology groups. Awesome. So let's jump right in. So 2023 has been a huge year for the Tour. You guys launched a brand new website, brand new mobile app. Tell the group here a little bit, how have the fans responded? What has the reaction been? Yeah, so we've been very excited. We spent really the, the prior 12, 24 months looking at how we could rebuild our platforms from scratch. They had not been rebuilt uh, in quite some time. Uh, so it really allowed us to go in and tackle uh, some issues that we wanted to deal with. One was speeding up the delivery of data. Uh, the other was uh, really kind of coming up with a new and more modern look and feel for how we deliver our content you know, to our fans every single day and get them closer to our players. So I think we have a little bit of a look uh, at what we launched. Yeah, Let's jump right in. and it's a new platform. This is the third round. Hot start for Cantley. Three birdies in his first seven holes. Pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah, we're very excited. And it's uh, been very well received by fans. We've seen significant increases in video on demand consumption, uh, overall fan consumption and usage of our apps. We have a 16% increase in our year over year app downloads. Uh, so fans have really embraced what we've built. Amazing. And you mentioned when you saw in the video some of the 3D imagery, the LiDAR scans of the golf courses, you did some virtual reality uh, during the FedEx Cup playoffs. What do the fans think of that? Yeah, so we partnered up with this group called Golf Plus VR. It was on the MetaQuest. Uh, they do a fantastic job of creating what really is the best golf game. Uh, they have over a million people playing that game every month at this point. Um, and we partnered up with them and we brought our, our courses uh, to their events. So you can go out there and actually play you know, TPC Sawgrass. You can go out there and play Pebble Beach. Uh, but not only can you play on those courses as a virtual avatar, um, you actually swing a club using the, the hand controllers. Uh, but we've actually brought live data into those. So when we play events uh, during those weeks, uh, you can actually play against the professionals. So we did a, an event called Beat the Pro, uh, where the, just moments after a shot was hit at the course, you could actually replay that shot inside the game and then try to take that shot uh, right, right there as well. And so we did that for the 16th hole at Waste Management Phoenix Open with that giant Coliseum Stadium and lots of cheering. And we also did it at the 17th hole, uh, the uh, famous Island Green at TPT Sawgrass. Uh, so we really look at that as another way to uh, reach fans, reach new fan bases, um, and introduce the game to more people because one of the best things is more and more people are playing the game in different ways. Absolutely. And you, you mentioned, or I'm sure a lot of the people sitting out here don't know the massive amounts of data that you guys are collecting on the golf course. With every single shot, ball movement, it's not just 
putting a little dot on the screen that right. you saw in that video, but now with that virtual reality canvas and all of that real estate that you have, how did this change what you could do with data and bring fans closer to the event and give them more insight? Well, with us, you know, we have a massive operation uh, with our new ShotLink group. Uh, and we are, you know, at any given point in time, there are 14 balls in movement uh, around the course. So usually it's across 150 to 200 acres. There's three groups of three on every single course, 18 fields of play, uh, and we change it every single week. So it's not like we're showing up for some week and everything's all ready to go. Our shuttling team's there the week before getting it all ready. Uh, and that includes the mapping. It includes LIDAR, radar, um, creating a, an entire point cloud around the course or with the course that allows us to create all of these experiences. All of that data not only goes to our PJ Tour digital platforms, pjtour.com, our TourCast product, uh, but it also goes to uh, all of our partners. So it goes to our friends at 2K, our friends at EA that create the video games so that they can have their experiences as well too. So we have massive amounts of data and it's not just about you know, ball of motion data, uh, but it's also about the entire, you know, creating essentially a digital twin of the entire event. I love, I love the line, and you, you and others on your team use it all the time. Compared to regular sports, you have 18 fields of play happening simultaneously. So we have these conversations around, oh, this should be easy to be able to set this up, and you go, no, we have 18 fields of play simultaneously. Right. It's not a singular stadium. But it's, it's true, it's amazing. Do you see yourselves doing more and, and diving deeper into the virtual reality space for next year? Yeah, we're still working with the Golf Plus team to come up with some new uh, new features. Um, they have some new great features. They have a new, actually, generative AI feature that I think you'll see very soon coming from them. So I think we'll we'll have more virtual opportunities as well, too. Uh, you'll continue to see us expand on our TorCast platform. Uh, we're rolling out a new ShotLink scoring uh, system that's all camera-based. Uh, so the team will be rolling out 120 cameras uh, across the course, uh, radar on every tee box and every green, um, and we'll be using that to actually score the event. Uh, so you'll, you'll see those cameras as you go around the course, or maybe you're watching on television, but now they can actually recognize the path of the ball, um, as well, you know, the, what we call the carry, and then the final resting point of the ball. So what you'll see across many of our platforms is actually the true shot shapes uh, that you see from the radars, the impact point where the ball lands, and then the place where the ball comes to rest. And the system that the team has built with a number of other folks also allows us to predict where the ball is going to land. It's gotten really, really good at it over this past year. Uh, so those cameras are able to capture all of that. And eventually we'll be taking all of that video that we're capturing from those cameras and turning it into alternate broadcasts, turning it into different types of content. Um, so we're just going to have more and more content to store in Glacier and many other places and then mine that for uh, great entertainment. Well, you just you introduced an interesting segue there of, of gen generative AI. Um, obviously, we've heard plenty about generative AI throughout the day today with the keynote. And I know you guys have built something pretty awesome that you were demoing during the Tour Championship. Can you talk a little more about what you guys have put out there, what might be behind the scenes right now, but how you plan to bring that into the fans in sure. the future? Sure, so for the past eight months, we've been working with the AWS team and the Bedrock team. We were one of the early entrants into using Bedrock and helping AWS kind of determine how it's going to be used and how it'll be shaped. Uh, so we've started working with that to create, see what kind of tools we can create with that. And we really started with where everybody's starting, which is a chatbot. How do we create a chatbot that can be used across all of our data, across all of our content uh, that we have available at the PGA Tour, and what does that mean, and how do we begin to work with third-party models? Right? So we really got into Bedrock. Uh, we started working with Anthropic's Claude model. We're working currently on the 2.0 model, soon to be working on the 2.1 model that just got rolled out, uh, and beginning to just see what will happen if we give a provide all of our shot link data from 2005 to 2023, uh, as well as all of our media our media guides, 30 years of media guides, which are stored in PDFs. Yep. Uh, and then 160,000 hours of our video asset management system. And how can we create a, a, a system that will allow fans to engage and get into the depth of the PGA Tour, get to see the shots they want to see, ask the questions like compare players, like how does Scotty Scheffler compare against uh, Rory McIlroy as they're playing at the Tour Championship based on their past performance, uh, or internally being able to use the tool sets to help our writers, uh, to be able to help our staff get an information that is in these multiple data sources that they couldn't otherwise get to, because not all of our staff know how to write queries, how to, right. how to write SQL queries, so they can write prompts and they can help us train. So we're in the middle of 
really developing that platform, and we've demoed a little bit of it here uh, earlier this week at a, at a, um, at a ProM event that we did at TPC Summerlin. Uh, so we're very excited about what the, what that, how we begin to get in it. So now, with the proof of concept, we're going to begin moving towards the opera, uh, how do we operationalize all of that, um, and how do we make it something that's you know, regularly usable. We're still going to have to learn how to deal with the toxicity and the bias you yeah. know, concerns that all of us have to deal with. Uh, but for us, primarily, it's going to be about accuracy, consistency. Uh, those are the two things that once we get, uh, get to that space where we feel comfortable that the responses are going to be correct you know, all of the time, we're going to get, we'll be ready to roll something out to our fans. That's amazing. Amazing. So I could see a little button in the bottom of that app that was showing on the back of the screen before of how to ask those questions right. while it's going on. I imagine that opens up the possibility to being in Vegas, sports betting, and, <laughs> and opportunities there for monetization by individuals. So that's very cool. Right. Very cool. So moving on here, so alternate broadcasts. You touched on this in your last point, too. So we've seen from Thursday Night Football uh, on the StatsCast to ESPN with the Manning Cast to the NHL with Big City Greens, alternate broadcasts are becoming a, a big play of how fans are consuming sports on television or other streaming platforms. At the Corn Ferry Tour, which for those of you who might not know what the Corn Ferry Tour is, it's the league right below the PGA Tour. A lot of the golfers have graduated from the Corn Ferry Tour to play on the PGA Tour. During the NV5 Invitational, they did some work with Barstool Sports and created your own alternate telecast there to um, pretty much bring in a younger demographic is, is my assumption. Right. When you look at what you do at, at Sawgrass and the Players' Championship with every shot live, which in and of itself was groundbreaking in how golf was covered, what do you see as the next thing over the horizon for that alternate broadcast? Is it Tiger sitting back and doing commentary on over 18 holes? Well, we would like to have Tiger sit back and do uh, commentary, but I don't think he's quite ready to give up playing golf as we've learned over the past few days. He's planning on trying to play more and more actually next year. So, uh, But someday hopefully we'll get there. But we, we continue to, as you continue to see content spread across multiple platforms and multiple types of platforms, uh, we continue to look at how do we create that content. So along with what we did with Barstool uh, at the Corn Ferry Tour, we do four streams every week with ESPN Plus, uh, which is a, a, a main group feed, uh, featured whole feed, uh, as well as uh, uh, kind of a, a, st a, a stats feed. I think you'll see some betting stuff coming as well too. Uh, and in addition to that, we do for our betting partners, we do two par three live streams that go through IMG and go to our betting partners um, so that they're able to run those at betting houses. So there's a lot more streaming going on behind the scenes. So we're going to continue down that road. I think you'll see more alternate broadcasts. Uh, we're certainly looking into things like, you know, big city greens and things like that with our right holder partners uh, as well too. And then again, every shot live where we're doing 24 streams live in the morning and another 24 in the afternoon uh, at the Players' Championship for the first two days and then 35 each on Saturday and Sunday where fans can watch every single group. They can watch every shot. We're the only event uh, in golf that does every shot, shows every shot live from the very first drive to the very last putt. Uh, so we're going to continue to build on that. What I want to see eventually in the future is this kind of growth in production be combined with the abilities of generative AI and AI and how we can let fans create the broadcast that they want to have, that they want to follow. If you're a fan that wants to follow Victor Hovland in Nor you know, from Norway and you want to hear it in Norwegian, we should be able to automatically generate that for you. Yep. Um, if, you know, with, with Every Shot Live, we don't have commentary on those streams. You get natural sound and you get to listen to the players, but we want to be able to eventually use probably synthetic voices um, to do commentary over those streams if that's what you want to hear. So it's really going to be about giving fans options and multiple ways to consume our sport. In the end, our goal, our primary goal, is to make sure that we create an opportunity for our players where every one of their shots can be seen by every one of their fans at any time. And so that's, that's what we're getting very close to right now. And I, 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 not to minimize the work that happens in every shot live, 88 plus cameras around the golf course. How many production people do you have on site to produce every shot live? So every shot live is a combination of our network partners uh, with NBC and ESPN on the streams and a combination of our own people that we bring on. So on top of what they, you know, the, the network partners bring to site, we bring another 60 people roughly, another 80 cameras, and we bring in all the network cameras 
Uh, eventually, we'll bring in the new live scoring cameras as well, too, uh, in the future. And so it's a very big production. Uh, when we started doing it with you guys three years ago, we had encoding trucks uh, on, we had a, a semi full of encoders on site. In the last two years, those have all gone away. We deliver all that video directly to the cloud now, directly from the course. That goes in a, a Amazon, you know, that goes to Amazon Media Connect, which is how we distribute it to every one of our partners. Even our rights holders, our international partners all take it. So they can take an individual stream from a, a, you know, a deck he's playing, they can take it in Japan, they can take that stream, and they can create their own production there right off of that. Um, and that's all done through the cloud, all done over Media Connect very successfully. And I think the thing that's key there too is once you take those feeds up, the production crew who are switching, who are adding graphics, they're not in Ponte Vedra, they're not at TPC Sawgrass. You're adding and pulling in shot link data on top of that, swipe overlays. It's a fully contained thing. We joke when we were on site, guys go, they turn on a couple things in the AWS console and they went, well, now what? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because we do, we, we do a great tour with you guys there. And uh, the thing that's ended up happening is when we started the tours three years ago, we had two or three trucks to bring people into. Now we have like half a truck because yep. uh, everything's gone up into the cloud. Yeah. So it, it's, it's been a, kind of a great way to demonstrate uh, how much we've progressed even in that three year period. So as we, as we start to turn the page here on, on 2023 and, and start looking ahead to 24, Give me a couple things that are on the short-term roadmap of what you're most excited about as, as the season gets ready to ramp up again. Yeah, so we're, we're moving into this new season with signature events. Uh, the top players will be playing in every one of those signature events, so we think we're going to have a great opportunity to show everybody the best players playing on the best courses in the world in a lot of different ways. So now that our teams have our new platforms out, our teams are able to go in and update those platforms. Uh, they built very flexible platforms, so you can expect to see new scoring features coming out, multiple types of leaderboards, uh, multiple types of content offerings. We have new portrait video that we've been doing with WSC Sports. Um, so it's just like watching, you, know, you get the highlights just like you do in TikTok or on Instagram. And so we're generating those uh, every single week. Uh, and then for our players, we're giving them more and more of their video to watch right after their events, right after they walk off the course any of our players get to see their video. They can look at it with their coaches. So the guys are actually uh, able to do that and they perform. You'll see some of those guys are performing actually pretty well. Scotty Scheffler, great player, uses that video week in and week out every single round to see how he needs to improve for the next day. Uh, so we're going to get into more of the delivery for both our fans and our players as we get into 24.